In this video, we're going to go over five tips to make your life easier when writing unit tests for a legacy app. Most code is not naturally unit testable, but with these five refactoring tips, we can make a better programming experience. This video has five main tips for any programming language, but has some extra tips packed in for .NET unit testing. In our examples, you should be able to follow along even if you don't use .NET. Before we get started, we are going to be using an app that we coded in the last video. A link will also be in the description. There will also be a link to the Git repo so that you have the code for both videos. Our tic-tac-toe game is great. It works exactly like we expect, but to test, it's very time consuming. By writing unit tests, we can make changes to our code and be confident that we didn't break anything. You still need to run a couple tests to prove that the buttons are linked, but you don't have to test every possibility in the app. The power of unit tests is that they save you time, from long manual test runs. Here you can see how the player win function looks when we wrote it. On line 33, you can see that we are referencing board, which doesn't exist inside of our function, meaning we're going to be testing the state of this class. Not a great practice. We pass exactly what we need to the function to make our job testing simple. If you don't do test-driven development, you will not need to go back and refactor. You don't need to test before, but you will want a test plan in mind so that you can prove your code is working. Here you can see that we made the player win function testable by passing in a two-dimensional array. This would break the code that depends on our previous signature on the left. You can fix this by overloading the function and calling our board that is holding the state. This way the original code will work with minor changes. Our tests will be easy to write. Here's the first example of a unit test. Using xUnit, a fact declares this function is a test. Empty board declares our board with all empty strings. Then we use set as an abbreviation for system under test. We set the variable to our class we are testing, then call the method we are testing with our test data. In this case, we don't want the player to win, so we check that it is returned back false. In our next example, our test is almost identical, but we're going to be testing that the player does win. XUnit lets us use a theory, so we don't have to write a bunch of tests with funky names that are almost copy and paste of the previous test. We are returning a list of arrays in the horizontal data variable. We then pass in a parameter board to player wins row. Each object will be its own test. You can find more information about theories in the link in the description. You can see with the rows tests in the previous example, we didn't also add columns and diagonals. You want to separate your test case so that if something breaks, you can identify where the problem is. Since our code has three separate blocks, each checking for different ways that the player can win, a failed column test will be better because it will lead you to your broken code. It's more obvious on what code has failed. We could add a couple more tests, but it's completely overkill to add every possible combination of x, o, and space. Here we have internal constants of x and o. For the tests to be able to use these constants, we have to add an attribute at the top of the namespace. This is specific to .NET. It allows access to internal accessibility levels in the test project. Here you can see in the test, we now execute test next player. We check the default value and switch it twice, just to make sure it goes through all the states. It's important to note that we don't want to use the test with X or O. Here, if we change them to L or S, the game will still function. We could even change them to words. Then the unit tests will still pass and our program will still work how we expect it to. Sometimes developers think that they have to call every function. Write your code in a way that the private internal workings don't change your tests. This gives you more flexibility to adjust your code without always going back to manage brittle tests. Here you can see that we modified our player win. We have moved code out of the function and added row wins, column wins, and diag wins. Here we also see the power of unit tests. Because we tested the code first, we know our refactor didn't break the program. And now we have code that's more easy to read. With all the refactoring we did, we can now quickly and confidently test our code. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. In the description, there's a link for an audible free trial. The great part is you can claim up to two free audiobooks. Even if you cancel your subscription, you can keep those books. I'll see you in the next video.